windy day. We got our box hooked onto us and we're headed up to northern Manitoba. Not often nowadays that I'm pulling a van trailer. There's a special delivery, household supplies, mattresses and stuff. Getting going a lot later than I wanted to, but uh, we're still on schedule. Just not as far ahead of schedule as I wanted. It's two o'clock now. I have about a 10 hour drive up north. Furthest north I've ever been. I know I've told you that already, but it's kind of exciting for me. It's something new. And tomorrow we get across on a ferry. It's going to be uh, quite a long ferry. I think it's like an hour and a half ride. And it's quite a small ferry. So, oof. I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to figure it out as we go. I don't know like how I got to I'll just get in line when I get there. I'm just going to go and park right at the ferry tonight. I mean, got to cross some big lake up there or something. We gotta go into this small community that you can only get to by ferry in summertime or by ice road in wintertime or by plane. But uh, as you can probably tell, it would probably be a little bit expensive to fly me in there. So we're gonna take the boat. And I'm not nervous to go on the boat ride. I'm just a little nervous to like, I don't know how the whole process works of getting loaded. Like, I don't know if there's going to be a lineup, and by the looks of it, the ferries aren't that big. It's pretty much just going to fit my truck and maybe a few other cars. I don't know how busy it gets. Like, what if what if they can't fit me on the ferry? What, i got to wait for the next ferry? There's only two ferries per day and only one ferry on Tuesdays. So... <laughs> ah, my first time doing this is always a little bit, uh... A little bit, uh, what would you call it? Anxiety-filled or a little... I always have a little extra anxiety when I'm doing something for the first time, you know? But it's not bad. I mean, I know I'll be fine. I just, I don't know what's going to happen and that bothers me. I like knowing what's going on. I have to figure out where to fuel. I'm assuming they got fuel stations I can fuel at in Thompson, Manitoba. I'm gonna have to find petrol passes because there's no flying J's up there. It's gonna be interesting. This brings me back to the days when I first started trucking. I didn't know where any of the truck stops were. I didn't know where all the fuel stops were. I didn't know how long it took to get places. Everything was new. And now I've been everywhere 10 times and you know, I know what I'm doing for the most part. But when I go to somewhere new like this, especially up north, where there's very few services, it's very remote. Like I said, the only way to get there is by boat. I'm excited. I'm excited. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see what happens. Something new for Trucker Josh. Doesn't happen every day. day today will be driving into the night so most of the day will be night if that makes sense just uh, going over the Fairford River here which is right by Fairford Manitoba you know the area a lot of campers around here I've never seen that before this is a new campground nice right on the river that's awesome but anyways, enough yapping from me. This is the interlake of Manitoba. It's not northern Manitoba yet. This is southern Manitoba. In that direction, there's a big giant lake. And in that direction, there's a big giant lake. You just can't see it from here. It's Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba. Once we get on top of the lakes, I believe that's where northern Manitoba starts, if I'm correct. Oh yeah, here's some of the scenery up Highway 6. The one road leading to northern Manitoba. There's just one.
Aaron Thompson, furthest north I've ever been. I'm gonna grab some fuel here at the Petro Pass. Another hour and a Approaching half. Approaching destination in 100 meters on the right side. Got another hour and a half north to go yet tonight. And in the morning we'll board the ferry. You have arrived at your destination on the right side. Petro Pass. I don't know if I came in the right direction or not. There's no arrows. The satellites on this side, usually the satellites on the driver's side, so I might have come in here backwards, but I don't think there's many people around here to care right now. I've driven over 850 kilometers today already, just in my own province. And we're only what, maybe two thirds of the way up towards Nunavut? My followers in Europe would get a kick out of that, I think. 850 kilometers in the UK, you'd get across the entire island, right? Pretty close, am I right? Here, it's only two thirds of the way up. One province. There's a whole other territory above this yet. We can go further north if the roads went that far. I mean, the roads don't go that far. <laughs> Canada is a big country and a lot of Europeans don't realize that. It is a massive, massive country. Where did my toque go? Well, you don't see my toque? I guess I can use this one for now. Oh, here it is. <laughs> ah, yes. There we go. So 850 kilometers, so we've done over 500 miles today. North. Temperature outside is zero degrees Celsius, exactly. 32 Fahrenheit. Not that cold at all. I uh, had a light dusting of snow on my way, which stopped. It only lasted about 15 minutes, and it stopped. But like I said, the forecast for... Uh, for tomorrow is 100% snow. Let's hope the weatherman's wrong again. I am prepared though. If it does get really cold, I brought along my winter gear, so should be fine. Not gonna lie. Mm. It's a little more chilly. Be a lot worse though. So I've always wondered what it was like in Thompson in northern Manitoba. And what do you know? It looks just like anywhere else. Is McDonald's coming up ahead here. I mean it's dark so I can't really give you a real accurate depiction of what it looks like. There's a Walmart here to our right, a small one, but it's a Walmart. I mean, a McDonald's and a Walmart, what more could you ask for? There's a Mark's Work Warehouse and a Tim Hortons. Just off screen to the right. This is a happening place. This is definitely civilization. Definitely. Even an A&W off to our left. Oh, Thompson, you're full of surprises. Look at this place. We're on Highway 280 now. I was really hoping it would be paved. Nope. It's gravel, 125 kilometers of gravel ahead of us. That's like uh, 70, 75 miles gravel. Talk about going to a remote community. So there's 75 miles of gravel and then there's an hour and a half ferry. Well, I had a good rest. I had a 
good rest. But I woke up to this. Gross. I guess you can't read that sign through here. That is uh, Manitoba Infrastructure and Transportation. It's MV Joe Keeper Split Lake York Landing Ferry. It's supposed to be here at 10 a.m. in one hour, less than an hour. I hope they didn't cancel it in this weather. This is where I'm gonna drive onto it, right here. I wanted to park in such a way that it was very obvious that I was here first, that I wanna get on the boat. <laughs> Cause uh, it's not gonna be a very big ferry. And I got here first. But there's nobody else here. So this guy's here, but he's like delivering a snowblower or something, I'm guessing, to the reserve here. Oh, I'm gonna wake myself up. I got an hour and a half, well, an hour before the ferry gets here. I guess I'll be boarding shortly after that. And then at 10.30, so it's just after 9 o'clock now, at 10.30 it leaves. I'm gonna take you on this vlog today, because we didn't film much yesterday, it got dark right away. I'm gonna go across the lake. And then tomorrow's video, uh, we'll start on the other side. Not too sure what to expect. I was kind of hoping for much better weather, for better scenery, and better footage. Guess we'll do what we can. This is Canada.